I have experienced a very unique moment on that ship, and I will forever be tied to it. I felt somebody right behind me. There was an anger violated his space. Not everybody who went out on this ship returned. <laughs> We're walking into some kind of vortex. Somebody came down here. <laughs> there were plenty of cries for help. Just got chills. I need to see what's going on, like something's not right. I'm feeling really nauseous right now. He didn't die in a pleasant way. Wow, all the anxiety just came back. I was going towards something bad. My name is Kim Russo, and I am a psychic medium. When I was nine, I was visited by the first of many dead people who wanted to communicate with the living through me. Realizing that I couldn't ignore my abilities, I chose to embrace them. Many people are haunted by traumatic paranormal events buried in their past. Some of these people have faces you might recognize. You've heard about their paranormal experiences. Now you are about to witness the moment they take me back to the place of the haunting in the hopes of uncovering the truth. This is the haunting of Kristen Renton. We are just about into Long Beach, which is about from Hollywood, about an hour away. We are going to the Queen Mary. Queen Mary is very special to me. I've had a lot of uh, unique, interesting experiences there. In its heyday, it was, you know, this beautiful sailing ship that would cross the Atlantic, and the history is so vast. The spirit that I saw, it has left an unsettled feeling in my heart ever since it happened. We're going to meet Kristen Renton. She's, a, she's an amazing actress from Sons of Anarchy. She had a paranormal experience aboard the Queen Mary. I've heard of it, never have been there, but it's known to be a very haunted ship. I can't wait to get there, actually. This is, this is a medium's dream. In 2005, I was shooting a, a film in Hilton Head, South Carolina, and I became very close with some of the cast and crew. And ever since that experience, we've stayed very close. In 2006, one of the cast members by the name of Gene came out to LA to visit, and uh, he was staying on the Queen Mary. And I had heard the ship was one of the most haunted places in America. Ever since I moved to Los Angeles, I've wanted to go visit it. I wanted to explore it. So I was really excited to be able to go and spend a night on the ship. So there's a group of us. It's me and my friend, Jean, my girlfriend, Sonia, and Steve. And uh, we decide that our mission for the evening is uh, we're gonna find out how to get down to the pool. Now, the pool was off limits. You're not allowed to visit it. The stories that we have heard regarding the pool is that it's haunted by a, a little girl. And several people have said to have seen her wandering around the, the pool area. And I find this door that had been left slightly ajar. And it appears to be a hallway leading to the pool. We were calling out for the little girl to show herself. We're 
trying to be quiet because we don't want to alert anyone that we're down here. My girlfriend Sonia and I decide that we're going to go explore this back room so we could take pictures and try and, and see this little girl. And when you walk back into this area, there were changing rooms. There were these stalls that you could go into. It was very, very dark back there. We would take a picture and, and use the flash as light, and it would illuminate everything for a split second, and then everything would go very, very dark again. And you don't know what's beside you. You don't know what's in front of you. And it was a very eerie feeling. You know, like we were invading in someone's personal space. We decided we're going to go back out to the pool area because we're starting to get a little freaked out. So Sonia and, and Steve decided that they were going to call it a night. And Jean and I decided that we were going to keep ghost hunting. So we're wandering around, and we come to the nursery. Now, the nursery door was locked, but I was very curious. So I'm jiggling the handle. I get on the ground, and I look underneath, and I'm trying to see if there's any cribs in there anymore, or if it was just an empty room. very quickly puts his hand on my shoulder. And he had this look of complete terror. And he just said, run. I instinctually just took off after him. I was confused, scared. And I stopped briefly, and I turn around to look at where I just came from. and. Every hair on the back of my neck stood up. There was this man. He had on like a 1940s three-piece navy suit. And he is chasing me. And I am terrified. When we finally come to the staircase, and we both stop in front of it. And we look down the hallway, and, and no one's there. I'm shocked, and I'm terrified, but so excited at the same time, because I just experienced what I had come to this ship to experience. That night on the Queen Mary, that was the first time I ever came face to face with a ghost. It has been burned into my mind what he looks like, the pain that was in his eyes, the, the feeling that he gave off as, as he chased me. And I just hope that I didn't in some way disturb him or upset him. You know, water is very conducive to attracting spirits. We must be getting close because I'm, I'm actually feeling a very strong presence of a gentleman. You know, I have to tell him to ease up on his energy. He's, he's, he's too strong, actually, emotionally. I don't know, I almost feel, like, angry. And it's, it's not my emotion that I'm feeling, it's his. And, you know, he's not a happy camper. I still have so many unanswered questions about that night why it happened, uh, who the gentleman was, and I'm, I'm hoping that maybe we can put my mind at ease knowing that maybe there's a way to let him know that I meant no disrespect, no harm. My goodness. There she is. That's massive.
It was a little hesitation, I'm not gonna lie. But I'm here to help, so that's what I'm gonna do. My gosh. I'm seeing right into the ship behind those gray walls. There's so many stories that need to be told. Not everybody who went out on this ship returned. That's the part I want to get to the bottom of. I see a man in my vision. He looks like he's in the middle of the ship somewhere, but more below, maybe even the bottom floor. He, uh... He's gonna tell me his story. I'm feeling that. He's waiting for me to come in. Behind those gray walls, there might be a few spirits that need to be sent on their way. I see a man in my vision. That's a different man than the one I felt in the car because the man in the car was angry. My curiosity lays with who these two men are. I just, just can't wait for Kristen to get here. There's the ship. Wow, all the anxiety just came back. I'm uh, anxious and nervous. All right. Let's do this. Hey! Hi! Hi, Kristen. I'm Kim Russo. Hi. So nice to meet you. It's a you. pleasure to meet you. Thank you for doing this. You called me here. Something really got you shaken up. You know what? Ever since my experience on this ship, I've just had um, some unanswered questions. I don't like to know too, too much. But please, by all means, if I do start to talk about anything that really links to your experience, I'd really love to uh, know about that. Okay. So yes. shall we do this? Let's do it. All right, let's, let's do go. it. There's a lot of uh, territory to cover. She's a big girl, and she's huge. <laughs> While I was waiting for you, I, I can't help but feel this anxiousness. And I don't know if it was coming from you or from s some ghosts on the ship. Very well could be for me. So. I was getting these feelings. Felt like I had vertigo or something. Really? So I was just feel like I was off balance, my equilibrium. A ladybug. Oh, wow. We have a visitor with us. That just landed on your neck? Yeah, I just felt something on my hand, and I looked down, and it was there. You know, ladybugs are a sign of, from spirit. You know that. I didn't know that. Butterflies, ladybugs, dragonflies, any kind of creatures are drawn to you. That's, that, that's, that's true. That says I, a lot. I do a lot of animal rescue work, so I feel very connected to the animal world. I have to tell you, I just love your energy. Thank you. It's like Thank so you. pure, and I, I wouldn't shock me if you have amazing psychic ability yourself. I've actually, you know, I've had experiences since I was a little, little girl. So it's very apparent to me, actually. Yeah? Yes. And. That ladybug is symbolic for a woman in your life. She might have helped raise you or was very close to you. She's telling me she definitely was in a nursing home at the end. And she's telling me that they used to polish her nails. <laughs> uh-huh. I do believe this is your mom's mom. Yeah. 
you visited her in the home and did you like oh, take yeah. care of her, make her pretty? <laughs> yeah. She's showing me this is a connection to I don't I don't want to call her grandma. Did you call her Nana? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cause she's mm -hmm. like, no, not grandma, Nana, Nana. Yeah. Cause I heard connection to your Nana. That makes sense. I have to say though, she's not the ladybug. Let's clarify that. No, yeah. She sends the ladybug. As yeah. As a sign of peace and love for you. Very and, con cool. and connection. And also to let you know she's here today. I feel like she's thanking someone for honoring her wishes as she shows me a cremation. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. So I think there might have been a discussion whether she should be or she shouldn't be. And she's very honored that her wishes were respected. Good. I'm very glad. The man she's with, he's a military uh, uniform. OK. OK. Um, C-H, it's Charles. It's Charles. Who is that? That's my grandfather. Is he a military man? Yeah. They're together. Oh, that makes me so happy. It just makes me happy. <laughs> She <laughs> said he was patiently waiting for her. Yeah, oh yeah, no, that woman never had eyes for anybody else. <gasps> he flew away. Wow. Hold on, somebody else just popped in. Oh, this is, uh, I wasn't expecting this. I don't feel this has anything to do with your grandma because this energy just came fr right from behind her. And it's like, honestly, like a jack in the box. He went, I'm here. <laughs> and he's like a jokester kind of guy. Like he has high energy. Uh -huh. He's young, maybe 30s, late 20s. Good morning. But he says he knows you and he says he was waiting for you to get here. Um, I asked him who he is, he says, he, first of all, he needs to calm down. He's like so wiry. He didn't die in a good way. But he says he knows you and he says he was waiting for you to get here. He didn't die in a pleasant way though. He didn't. He, uh... honestly, he, he fell or jumped from a very high spot. He was very troubled. That's what he keeps telling me. He says, I wasn't, um, I, I, I wasn't understood. He also just said, I didn't do it. I didn't do it. Oh, wow. Does that make sense? If it's who I think it is. I will ask for clarity. Okay. But if it's who you think it is, does this make sense yeah. so far? Yeah. He was my friend. OK. And it, wow. They, they don't always answer me on cue. It's, yeah. Especially this guy, he's like ADD in spirit. Yeah. That da uh huh? Um. Jack. 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 John. Jack. John. Jack. John. Jack. He's given me both names: Jackie, Johnny. Jackie, Johnny. Wow. Do you know who this? I don't know. Yeah. Where to go with this? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, he. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Is it true you dreamt of him? Mm -hmm. He said, I've come in, I've came, I came already in a dream. And we were on a ship, which was really weird. <laughs> what do you mean when you dreamt in of him? In my dream, we were on a ship. It's not weird to me. But we were on a sun deck just like this. In your dream? In my dream. And he just came and said, love you, Kristen. 
I said, love you too. That was it. And it was cool, because for me, it was like, when he passed, I never had closure, you know? That's most likely why he's coming. Oh, that's but awesome. But I have to tell you, I'm wondering if he knew we would be here, and he purposely set the stage in your dream. Very cool. With the same stage now. Woo! Wow, that's crazy. That, that's amazing. I'm so... What a gift. I am so happy he showed himself. Thank you. Actually, thank you, Grandma. Did she kind of let him venture in? Not surprised that my grandmother is orchestrating all of this. So I bet you there's some parts of this ship that are off limits to the public. I'm going to try and see if we can get into the places where nobody has dared to go. So, hi, Hello, nice, nice to, to meet, meet you. you. Hello. I can't thank you enough for helping us. What is your role? Well, my role here is that of senior captain. Oh, so you definitely are very familiar with this ship. Yes, ma'am. Kristen, I'm seeing you standing near a pool. Ah, okay. okay. All right. So, we need to go there. Okay. Could you lead the way? I can take you there. Great. Abby. Thank you so much. Okay. This way, lady. This ship is just tremendous. You can just walk for days and, and be in a different spot. You can actually walk about 20 miles and never trace the same area of deck. Is that, is that so? It's a mathematical fact. This is the... Uh, Pool area? This is the infamous yes. pool area. OK. I didn't come in this way last time. Oh, boy. This is where, where my whole adventure started. Because we had heard that the pool area was supposedly haunted. So you actually set out with intentions of finding ghosts. Yes, we did. There is a lot of activity I'm feeling here, but go ahead. What happened? The friends that I was with told me about a legend of mm -hmm. a little girl that drowned. Well, honestly, that might just be a legend. I don't really feel that. I never saw anything. I'm feeling a lot of other energies. As a matter of fact, there is a spirit standing at the top of that step. He's not appearing very solid to me. I have to mentally communicate with him. I want to know what he's doing there. He's not really trying to interact with us, but he's watching. He's not talking. I, I have to just, I have to wait. But I have to tell you, what I'm curious about is, what was here that had you shaken up? Um, you know, when we came in, I was drawn much more so to the changing rooms. When we went back into the changing rooms, it was just this heavy, really electric energy. There's some kind of link with this man. There is a place, there has to be another room, because I can actually see like the steam room or the engine. I'm seeing all very intricate machinery in my vision. What is back to back to the changing rooms? In back of the what changing if, yeah, rooms. It, it, uh, what is it? The upper parts of the boiler rooms. Bingo. This energy you felt in the changing room, I'm getting a vibe that it was something what was bordering that wall. That's what I'm feeling. It's really this engine room that I'm interested in. So can you take us there? I can indeed. Call okay, me. great. Kristen, are you feeling anything going on in your stomach? Well, this, um, I'm feeling really <laughs> nauseous right now. We're walking into some kind of vortex.
This is the engine room. Wow. Did you venture to this part when you came on your ghost hunt? No, I did not venture to this part. This is all new for me. This is all brand new for me. So I'm experiencing it for the first time just like you. I'm going back in time here. There's not a lot of men. They're here, but they're all upstairs. There's a few stragglers that I'm sensing in the time and the space. Somebody came down here to check something. Something very unusual happened to him. It just got really cold. This man got killed right here. Somebody came down here to check something. Something very unusual happened to him. It just got really cold. Did you? It just totally from standing right, right there. Right about there. Yeah, I have just massive goosebumps. This, so this man. I'm starting to sense more of who he is. He worked here. Do you feel this pull? I feel like I'm being pulled. I feel like I'm being told to go in this direction because it just keeps getting colder and colder. Colder and colder. And colder. I have chills up and down. Wow. Something happened right in this doorway. Okay, listen what I'm getting. Listen what he's telling me. There was something against the wall. Somehow, it fell forward. It hit a button. My whole shoulder and my whole one right side of my body is like, I can't describe it. It's like crushed, or this man got killed right here. this move, or did th was there a big ironclad door? There was a young engineer who died right here in 1965. And you see, this is a watertight door right here. This is the gears for the door. And it, it pulls oh, so in? He, was... mm -hmm. so he didn't come to terms with his passing only because it happened, wasn't supposed to happen. That's what he keeps saying. It, it was an accident. I'm telling you, there was not a lot of people down here when this happened. So there was a lot of cries for help. I hear him wailing in pain. He didn't really live very long at all after that. Everything was just crushed. But there were plenty of cries for help. How tragic. I told you, you're very sensitive to the energy. When you were in that changing room, you were picking up on his fear and his panic. You were feeling it right through the wall. The minute we started walking towards this area, I just felt like I was going towards something bad, something sad. Something sad. Yeah. OK. It is a sad energy. I am getting the sense of, of a gentleman. Where did you go after the changing room? We ended up at the third class nursery. OK. So could you take us there? Absolutely. I, I need to get to this nursery. I keep getting the visual of this man. What does he look like? I just keep seeing like more like a slender man in a blue suit. He's the angry man who's very protective of someone. You know who that is? You, you look surprised. I, 
I don't know. I, I, maybe. I'll know more when, when we get in the space. This is it? Mm -hmm. Everett, I can't thank you enough for, for helping us on this tour. We could not have uh, validated hardly any of it. It's my pleasure, you. ladies. Thank and you so much. Enjoy yourselves. OK, thank you. Wow. This is, this is key. Something is mm -hmm. very key right here. Mm -hmm. Tell me a little bit about your experience. First time I ever came on the ship, when we did our own little ghost hunting, we ended up here. And um, I wanted to get into this room. I was on my knees actually trying to, like, somehow get the lock open. Why did you want to get in the nursery? What led you? What At possessed the time, you? I felt like I had to. I immediately was drawn. And I was like, I need to go over there, and I need to get in that room, and I need to see what's going on. Like, something's not right. I needed to see what's on the other side of that. OK. Door. I am sensing the energy of one of the children who played here. Oh, this is a girl. This is a little girl. OK, this is what I'm getting. This is what I'm understanding. I kind of feel like there's some kind of link with this child and what's key to finding the connection with the man. Is this off limits? OK. You know, I dare not even try to go in there because he's still here. You were most likely feeling that protective energy that, that built up in this space. The energy of this man is still guarding his child. The energy of this man is still guarding this space. Like, his mindset is still guarding his child. This is the dominant one on this floor, on this ship. I can guarantee you, you and I are not the only ones who have encountered him. My friend Gene, who was with me at the time, he came over, he put his hand on my shoulder. Right here. Yep. And at that moment, I saw his face, and he was terrified. And he just took off. Where? Down Here? the hallway, yeah. We have to go there. OK. Because we need to retrace the steps. This hallway. This hallway. Right here, yeah. So he's about, I don't know, 10 steps in front of me. And, and I felt somebody right behind me. And I stopped oh. for a second, and I turned around. And running full speed towards me was that man. Full speed. And I just turned, and I took off. When I saw him, and he was running after us, there was an anger. Like, we violated his space. But there was also, for me, I saw this absolute, utter sadness. There was this emptiness in his eyes when he was coming towards us. OK, this is what I'm getting. There's something about this gentleman that seems I can't hear an actual accent, but there's a, there's a foreign feeling to this man. The way he looks, he had very angular features, mm -hmm. very precise angular features. Um, I'm picking up a name. Sounds like Alex or oh, wow. Alexander. It's uh, it's either Russia. It, it, it's 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 foreign. It's definitely not American. Paces back and forth and back and forth. 
He's he's still guarding this space. Yeah, this very man much. is still here. He has a very big connection to, I want to say, the little girl. I've always thought that he was protecting someone that was in this room, his, his okay. child. I always felt that it's true. I was disrupting something. From what I'm, my vision showing me, the reason he was always protecting his child is because he was worried about her getting taken. Oh, wow, the story gets crazy. No! He's showing me that his daughter was taken away from him on this ship. Wow. She was here one That's day, gone the next. I mean, that makes total sense as to why me trying to get in there would trigger the adverse reaction that I had. He died soon after that. His spirit came back here because this was the last place he saw his daughter. So he needs to be freed from this space. Wow. I just got chills. The, that would make sense. Now, let me ask you something. How did this leave you? Well, you know, when you've been talking about somebody that was angry and somebody that, you know, you've, you felt like they were this angry person, mm -hmm. I kept thinking, OK, it must be him. It must be him. But I didn't, I, I wasn't sure. I mean, everything that you just said completely validated everything that I experienced and that I felt. What kind of resolution are you, were you looking to get coming here today? We need to put some kind of closure to this. Yeah. For me, coming back here today, I didn't mean any harm. I wasn't trying to uh, stir something up just to find a way to maybe either help him move on or, or just you know let him know that I meant no disrespect. OK. Well, you know what, Kristen? I would love to go someplace and explain to you how you can do this. OK. So, Kristen, I was compelled today to bring you something. And what it is is it's an absolutely beautiful crystal. This is clear selenite. And I'm going to actually hand this to you. I want you to feel it. It has an amazing vibration. What selenite does is it clears confusion of consciousness. Oh. And I really feel this man is confused. Yeah. You know, in his mind, he's still protecting his child. I really feel that it would be a great idea for you to go and bring that as a peace offering. Mentally, tell him to go to the better place and that his daughter's not here any longer. When you do that, you are putting the intention out there yeah. of what you would like to see happen. OK. And so that's going to be your closure for this situation. OK. I think it's a wonderful idea. And you know who else just popped back in? You think your grandmother left, do you? <laughs> no, she wouldn't do that. <laughs> because she told me she saw you trying to wear her ring today. Yeah. And what happened? You weren't able to bring it or wear I, it? I, uh, I couldn't get it over my knuckle. <laughs> I, I literally had a conversation with myself where I said, she'll know I tried to wear it. She heard your thoughts. Yeah. So that's why she's giving you that, hey, don't let her go without letting her know that I know she plans on wearing my ring. That's so cool. So <laughs> grandma has to have the last word, doesn't she? Yeah, that runs in the family. I want to thank you for bringing me on this amazing, amazing voyage. This has been one of the most unforgettable, amazing days of my life. Can I please have a hug? Yes. Because thank you. Because you are just a doll. <laughs> thank you. Ooh, oh. Pleasure to work with. You're amazing. It was great having Kim validate my experience, seeing the same gentleman. That was an experience that I truly did have, and it was real, and I'm, I'm beyond appreciative. I absolutely feel that I have the closure that I was looking for. 
I can now really move on knowing that um, I have made peace with that and I've made peace with him. I'm lost for words. It was an amazing day. And I am keeping Kim's number in my phone from now on. <laughs> Looking back, Kristen returned to the Queen Mary with lingering questions about the man she encountered there. We discovered he was a grieving father whose daughter was taken away from him on this ship never to be seen again. Today's journey reminds us that the bonds of love cannot be destroyed by physical death, and that sometimes spirits return to the site of their greatest trauma, condemned to relive the past until someone helps them move on.